from experimental aircraft to interstellar space. These are some of the craziest NASA projects. Number 7. North American X-15, 1959-1968, Experimental Aircraft Developed in the 1950s by the North American Aviation Company and Reaction Motors, the X-15 was a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft. X-planes were a series of experimental U.S. aircraft and rockets, their primary use being to evaluate and test the new technologies and aerodynamic concepts. The X comes from the U.S. system of aircraft designation. As the NACA became the NSAA, the X-15 played a major role in the agency's infancy. In the 1960s, the aircraft set records for speed and altitude, providing critical information for future projects. The X-15 was no ordinary aircraft, some might consider it a a rocket with a cockpit. Damn, that sounds wrong. Taking off with an X-15 was not an easy task either, considering it was strapped to a revamped Boeing 52B Stratofortress. Yes, that's right, the X-15's takeoff requirements included speeds of 500 miles an hour at altitudes of 45,000 feet. Of the combined 199 test flights, 13 flights and 8 pilots met the Air Force criteria for spaceflight, exceeding altitudes of 50 miles. Of those 13 flights, only 2 exceeded the Kármán line, which is the internationally recognized 100km altitude used by the FAI to denote the edge of space. On October 3, 1967, Major William Pete Knight set a world record for speed in a manned aircraft he reached a top speed of 4,520 miles per hour, Mach 6.7, a record that is still unbroken. On August 22, 1963, Captain Joseph Albert Walker set the X-15 altitude record when he reached heights of 67 miles. Without a doubt, the most famous X-15 test pilot was Neil Armstrong. Even though he didn't claim the records for altitude or speed, he does hold the record for the longest X-15 flight, in both flight time and distance covered. As the 200th test flight over Nevada approached, bad weather and technical problems kept delaying it. After the sixth delay, the flight was permanently cancelled. The X-15 was detached from the B-52 and put into indefinite storage. Nowadays, you can see it at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. The X-15 program employed mechanical techniques used in the later crewed spaceflight programs, including reaction control system jets for controlling the orientation of a spacecraft, spacesuits, and horizon definition for navigation. The re-entry and landing data collected were valuable to NASA for designing the space shuttle. Number 6. NEXSS 2015 and ongoing The search for ET Next, we take a look at a project from this century the Nexus for Exoplanet System Science, or the NXSS for short, is an initiative to combine data from all research teams looking for exoplanets. Exoplanets, in the simplest terms, are planets that are outside of our solar system. The first unconfirmed exoplanet was noted in 1917, but it wasn't until 1992 that an exoplanet was recognized and confirmed independently. Statistics say, assuming there are 200 billion stars in the Milky Way, there should be approximately 11 billion potentially habitable Earth-sized planets. As of 2020, we have only confirmed the existence of 4,281 exoplanets. The number includes all exoplanets, not just potentially habitable ones. The nearest exoplanet is the Proxima Centauri b, located a mere 4.2 light years away. If you left on a journey to Proxima Centauri b right now, using current tech, it would take you around 6,300 years to get there. Better pack a lunch. Anyway, the NEXSS functions as a virtual institute that is composed of 16 interdisciplinary science teams from three NASA centers, two research institutes, and 10 universities. In the future, the coalition will hopefully expand internationally as more and more teams make groundbreaking discoveries in the search for extraterrestrial life. On this note, did anyone else hear that the Department of Defense will release new information from the Navy's Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force? Number 5. Deep Space Transport 2027 Plus Spacecraft The Deep Space Transport, also known as the Mars Transit Vehicle, is one of NASA's most ambitious designs yet. Even though the DSD is still just a concept to be studied and there has been no official proposal for funding, it is based on real science modules that exist already, like the Orion spacecraft, which has been in development for over 10 years. 
let's talk about Orion for a bit. Its main application being crewed exploration beyond low Earth orbit, the spacecraft has seen a lot of success so far. It has also cost around $21 billion. As of 2015, the Orion program was assessed at a 70% confidence level for its first crewed flight by 2023. Orion is only one part of the deep space transport vehicle system. The DSD would also need a propelled habituation module for the astronauts, and a so-called Lunar Gateway, which is a planned space station in lunar orbit for servicing and reuse. A potential manned mission to Mars, unless something spectacular happens in the next 10 years, would take at least 2 to 3 years to complete. Number 4. InSight 2018 Mars Exploration What you just heard is a seismic recording of high winds, followed by an earthquake. Well, in this case, it was a Mars quake. Thanks to InSight. The interior exploration using seismic investigations, geodesy, and heat transport mission. The so-called robotic lander traveled 300 million miles to its final destination on the red planet. Some eight years in the making, InSight was part of the discovery program, in which teams submitted their best designs and concept studies on how to better understand Mars. The mission launched on May 5, 2018, aboard an Atlas V401 rocket and the lander touched down at Elysium Planitia on Mars on November 26th of the same year. InSight's primary objectives were the placement of a seismometer, which would provide accurate 3D models of the planet's interior, and also study Mars' early geological evolution. During InSight's mission, NASA also tested a pair of CubeSats, which are mini-satellites that provide real-time communication. Well, as real-time as it gets, since there was still a 8-minute light speed delay. They did not land on Mars, but did provide researchers with vital real-time information about InSight's landing. In February of 2019, NASA reported that the CubeSats went silent and are unlikely to be heard from again. Number 3. Genesis Capsule 2001 Return to Sender Genesis was a probe created by NASA with one simple goal in mind. Collect a sample of solar wind particles. All things considered, the capsule has one of the coolest designs ever. This is what it looked like in its collecting configuration. The craft was launched in 2001, and in 2004, it became the first successful sample return mission since the Apollo program to return material beyond the orbit of the moon. The return phase of the mission did not go so smoothly. The capsule crash landed in Utah on September 8, 2004. A design flaw in the Drogue parachute prevented its deployment. The crash contaminated many of the sample collectors, with only a few being successfully recovered at first. The geniuses at NASA managed to remove a lot of the contamination and figured out different ways to analyze the solar wind particles that were collected. Overall, the Genesis science team managed to achieve all of the mission's major science objectives. Incidentally, the desert dust contamination was the easiest to deal with. The capsule's own compounds like lubricants and building parts prove most difficult. Since 2004, pictures of the Genesis capsule have captivated certain parts of the internet, mainly top 10 pictures of UFOs on Earth and the likes. For what it's worth, the pictures do look a bit out of this world, don't they? Number 2. Voyager 1 and 2 1977 Interstellar Space Gary Flandro, an aerospace engineer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, discovered something incredible in the late 1970s. The outer planets of our solar system would be aligned in a way that would allow a space probe to essentially jump from planet to planet using their gravitational force. This special alignment of planets happens once every 175 years, so time was of the essence. Thus, the Voyager program was born. And after a little science here and a little science there, Voyager 1 and 2 were ready for launch in 1977. Interestingly, the Voyager 2 space probe was launched two months before Voyager 1. Both space probes delivered amazing results, giving us the first glimpses of the giants that lie beyond Mars. By 1989, Voyager's primary mission was completed with the close flyby of Neptune by Voyager 2. 
On February 14, 1990, the Voyager 1 probe, which had completed its primary mission, was commanded by NASA to turn its camera around and take one last photograph of Earth, some 3.7 billion miles away. You may know this photograph as the pale blue dot, immortalized by Carl Sagan in his book by the same name. It is the ultimate picture of us. By the late 1990s, Voyager 1 became the most distant human-made object from Earth, a record that it will probably keep for generations. In 2012, with speeds exceeding 38,000 miles per hour, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to enter interstellar space. In 2018, Voyager 2 did the same. Interstellar space is the space between stars in the galaxy. It's as close to an absolute vacuum as you can get. At the start of 2020, Voyager spacecraft are running out of power. One by one, instruments will be deactivated until sometime around 2025, when there will no longer be sufficient power to operate any scientific instruments. But for me, that's when Voyager's real mission starts. Both spacecraft carry golden phonograph records that contain data detailing the location of Earth, music, pictures, and sounds of Earth. These records are meant as a sort of a time capsule and a message to any civilization that may stumble upon the spacecraft. Granted, the spacecraft are not expected to collide with a star for one sixteen years from now, one can dream of the possibilities. I think President Jimmy Carter summed it up pretty well. This is a present from a small, distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time, so we may live into yours. Number 1. Project Apollo, 1960s. Landing on the Moon Building up on the success of Project Mercury and Gemini, which saw the first Americans in space, the Apollo program had one unbelievable goal in mind, landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. From 1961 to 1972, the Apollo program set several major human spaceflight milestones, not without some tragedy. The Apollo 1, the first crewed mission of the program, was supposed to conduct the first low Earth orbital test of the Apollo Command and Service Module, slated to launch on February 21, 1967. The mission never flew. A cabin fire during a launch rehearsal test on January 27 killed all three crew members. Command pilot Virgil Gus Grissom, senior pilot Ed White, and pilot Roger B. Chaffee. After the incident, both NASA and the US Congress conducted inquiries as to the cause of the fire. After some deserved controversy, the public was skeptical of the program and its future success. However, NASA pushed on. Apollo 2 to 6 were unmanned tests of the command and service module. Apollo 7 was the next manned mission and was the first publicly broadcast mission. On December 21, 1968, Apollo 8 launched from the Kennedy Space Center on a Saturn V rocket. 55 hours later, the three-man crew became the first to ever orbit around the moon. Apollo 10's crew got as close as 50,000 feet from the lunar surface in a so-called dress rehearsal for the first lunar landing. Which brings us to Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin, the crew of Apollo 11. On July 20, 1969, at 8.17 UTC, after a four-day journey through space, Neil Armstrong became the first person to step onto the lunar surface. Aldrin followed suit a little later. Command module pilot Michael Collins flew the module Columbia alone in a lunar orbit for about 21 hours, patiently waiting for Armstrong and Aldrin to return. Apollo 11 effectively ended the Cold War space race and fulfilled JFK's dream of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The Apollo program did not end there. Do you know who was the last man on the moon? Check out my last man on the moon video. It's awesome. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.